is Ivan Ivanov, and you are watching UFO Disclosure Bulgaria. We have the documents. We have the witnesses. True stories about UFOs, visitors from outer space, and other worlds. Okay, well, from the beginning with me, the first thing was when I was nine years old. I witnessed a red ball of light and it would follow me down the road. It would stop and I would stop and it would continue and I would continue. It was incredible. It lasted maybe four minutes, three to four minutes, maybe a little bit longer. It's hard to tell when you're nine years old and you see something like this. It, for me, that's the, the one thing out of my whole first 10 years of my life, the first decade that I remember. And I'll never ever forget it. Have you been scared oh. of this? Ah. Okay. Once, once the action builds up, and you have, it, okay, it's, there's there's a part of this topic called high strangeness. And now, once you immerse yourself into the topic of high strangeness uh, surrounding UFOs, and not just surrounding UFOs, but there's other things as well. Some people could call them spirits. Some people could call them, you know, entities, whatever the case may be. But there, there's life forms all around us, I believe, personally, all around the universe. I believe it permeates through maybe good and bad, like here on Earth. It's not all, they're not all good. Now, I, I know this for sure, through observation and 32 years of observation. Now, for me, personally, the red ones, the red balls of light, and sometimes the orange balls of light, they're, they're not the best guys in the world <laughs> that you want following you. Now, I, I've witnessed these guys, and I do a lot of composite photography and a lot of Star Trek photography and whatnot, and when I was 12, we witnessed a red ball of light above the backyard in Western Sydney, and it would fly around, it would stop, and then it would go over this way, and then my, my brothers and I, we watched this light flying around the top of us and we were camping out in the backyard looking up at the sky you know and it was a hot night you know and we're just talking and then all of a sudden a blue ball of light has come into play and it started chasing the red ball of light around the sky so and we're watching go oh my god this is incredible you know <laughs> and it, you, don't, you don't see this that often you know yeah. and then the next second a green yellow green ball of light has come in as well and it seemed to be backing up the blue ball of light and it, both of the balls of light then started chasing the red ball of light around the sky. Now, they were chasing it vast distances, then stopping at the drop of a hat. How are you feeling that no? How are you feeling that In bad? What do you say? What is that? Oh, it's, okay. I guess when you're younger, you, you, you think differently about these things and you, you process the thoughts differently as well. Um, it, it's it's when you get older, you, you definitely do start to um, think about it in a different way. Uh, you, the more information that you glean from the subject, the more you can understand it a lot more. But at the same time, anybody who tells you in this whole world that they know what this phenomenon is, is full of themselves. Because nobody knows what this phenomenon is. Nobody. I'll tell you that now. And people can say, oh, it's aliens, it's little green men or little grey men or whatever the case is. And they may be right to a point, but I, I believe there's more to it than that. There's much more to it than that. Um, to me, the way they act around us and the way they observe us and watch and the way they come down and the times they come down, if you look at the times they come down to Earth, whenever we're getting together massive military operations, um, anybody, when the Russians are getting together, when the Americans are, are doing military operations, UFOs come. 
Okay. Now, they're very interested in our technology. They have been throughout history, back to the Foo Fighters, even well before that. Yeah. Um, all throughout history, in here. Now, Wonders in the Sky is a good book by Jacques Vallée. If you want to go into some possible sightings all throughout history that have been gleaned from history, if you look at them all very closely, they're pretty much the same as they are today, just slight variations on some of the craft or objects that, are, that we're seeing. How do you get messages from them? Okay, no. When, I say, when, when, when you say messages, you mean like they talk into your brain? Ah. Okay. Now, when I was living in Dunedoo eight, eight years ago, um, a couple of times we'd get a feeling. I'd get a feeling or whoever was with my father sometimes would get a feeling to come outside. We'd go outside. It's, not, it's more than a feeling. It's very difficult to explain, but it's more than a feeling. It's like a knowing. Yeah. No, to go outside, right? And so you go outside, and then sure enough, not every time, but seven out of ten times, there'll be something hovering nearby. Sometimes you can feel these things, the energy that they're giving off if they're, if they're close. They affect birds, animals, um, and the electrical environment around us as well. So there's a theory that they're giving off ionizing radiation, which is causing them to react with the oxygen which is causing the glow you know the different types of glows that they're having around the objects um, and uh, there's reports of them going into water you know I have footage of a ball of light hanging above the water and then flying down an angle into the water leaving no splash whatsoever so they don't affect the earth I've seen them fly into the ground um, I've had people around me witness long shafts of light fly into the ground right next to my hand, you know, and disappear, melt into the ground and gone. I mean, how can you explain something like that? It's it's quite it's quite it's it's quite amazing and quite impressive. You know, it's it's um, one of those things is afterwards, oh my god, you know? but you're still left very confused because you, you didn't have them come down and say, shake your hand and say, Hi, my name is and I come I come from this planet or I come from here or there. You know, they don't do that sort of stuff. It's very, very rare. They seem to come down um, to warn us about nuclear weapons or to, to follow our military operations, like I was saying, and then maybe glean where we are, uh, what we're doing, what, our, uh, what we're thinking of doing next, if we're going to invade another country. What, you know, we're, we're, as you know, right now, everyone around the world's on edge. We're all worried about coronavirus. We're all worried about going outside and getting sick or whatever the case is, you know, and um, it must create a very sort of unstable environment that these things, like emotions, you know, feelings, energies, all around us, us humans, you know. And at the moment, these things, after eight long years, are being spotted again in Dunedoo, New South Wales, here in Australia. After eight long years, when I was there last, they're back again now. So I'm heading up this Tuesday to Dunedoo. I'm going to spend a few months there, and I'm going to be out in the backyard or wherever every night. I'm going to get some brilliant footage because I've got some really good equipment now, much better than what I had back then. Yeah. Excellent. I can hear now. Yep. Yeah, it stopped yeah. on my end. So. Oh, okay, okay. I said you have a lot of cameras. Excellent. I've got a couple. Yeah, I could say. Thank you, sir. What, do you think sir, you have much, some yeah. mission? It's hard not to feel that way. When you, when you see object after object and the way they appear, the way they drag you outside sometimes, um, the games they play, the little things they do, it's, it seems they have a sense of humor sometimes. Um, and I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like they're, they're playing with us. They don't want us to know exactly what they're doing. But at the same time, they don't really care if we see them that often, you know? But the funny thing is, what has always got me wondering is why, you know, I saw one when I was young and I know like 32 years ago was my first sighting. So I've spent my life, you know, growing up telling people what I saw or, you know, and, and my brothers and my father, they've seen them with me um, on multiple occasions, uh, you know, so they know it's real, you know, so it's, it's kind of like 
part of the family versus other part of the family. Some people think they're crazy or we're crazy or whatever the case is. Who knows? But the thing is, um, you have to see it with your own eyes to know that it's real. You can't, you can't, you know, humans are liars. Not every human, but a lot of humans all lie, you know? And this is something I've found in the UFO field more than any other field that I've worked in in my entire life. And it's unfortunate, it's sad. I've tried to bring some honesty and a little bit of integrity to it. And, you know, and, and for that, you're not always liked or you, you thought of as, oh, an enemy because he's not talking, he's not claiming he knows what it is or he's not claiming this or he's not claiming that. So his story is going to be boring or whatever the case is. No, it's going to be truthful and you're going to get what I know and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And if I don't know what it is, I'm going to say it. If I know what it is, I'm going to say it. But at the same time, like I said, if you think you know what it is in this phenomenon, you don't know what it is. At the end of the day, it's, it's very, the more, the more you think you're closer to the truth, the more you're actually further away from the truth. So you can't let yourself get comfortable and think, oh, I know what this is. It's the Pleiadians from Pleiades, or it's the Orions, or it's these guys, it's these guys. They don't call themselves Pleiadians. We do. We call them Pleiadians. So they wouldn't call themselves Pleiadians and come down here and go, hey, guys, we're the Pleiadians. No, you call us Pleiadians. So there's little cults that start up from around the world with individual names. And I didn't never wanted to be part of this ever. And little cults of little personalities, little people with issues and they want to be famous or they want to be this or that. No, it's not about fame. There's no fame involved here. There's like... You know, there's a million other things, but the infamy more than anything. You know, I mean, is it's. I think, maybe, <laughs> I think maybe your mission is to documentary all this, to filming, to have more facts, to have more videos, to have more pictures of that you see it. Yeah, well, that's that. That is the intent initially was to get the better and keep on getting better quality footage, better quality footage, because that's what everybody wants at the end of the day. They want something that they can go, oh my God, that's undeniable or it's been hoaxed. That's what they'll say. It's either, oh my God, that's a real UFO without even seeing one with their own eyes. Yeah. You know, that's why I say it's very important. You need to see them with your own eyes. Go into your backyard at nighttime, you know, spend two hours in your backyard, look up at the sky. It might start off your journey, you never know, into seeing him. And believe me, it is a roller coaster ride from hell, this whole thing. It's insane. The, the people that get attracted to you, the people that, you know, are interested in the work, the, it's you meet all sorts of people all around the world. It's incredible. You know, this is my favorite part of it, you know, um, but at the same time, it's, you can't prove, like I said, you can't prove it to anybody. They need to see it with their own eyes, you know, at the end of the day. So, at the, at, in the beginning, it was about getting better, better, better footage. and But now I realize that, no, I don't need to get better footage. Because at the end of the day, I've seen, you know, what happens. I, the better footage you got, the more it must be hoaxed or faked. Because nowadays you can fake footage or you can do stuff or whatever if you're skillful enough, right? So, of course, the skeptics are going to go straight to that. Without even, and then brush your whole story off like it's nothing, you know? Witnesses, hundreds of witnesses down the toilet, you know, nothing. Hundreds of photographs, hundreds of videos down the toilet, you know, see you later. Many, many tens of thousands of hours of work I've put in over the last 32 years. Many thousands, and that's not reading books about the subject, that's getting out there and amongst it, and you know, it's what we've all got to do. And there's some great groups out there, like Facebook groups, like in the field, the researchers in the field, ufology, and, um, these guys are brilliant, hit by a gentleman called Scott Brown, and I love these guys, they're awesome. It's the one of the groups that I've been involved with from the start that you know I'll never leave because that's what I want. I want everybody to go outside and spend some time outside, and that's why here in Australia I'll, I'll get you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 people for a sky watch, and we'll sit out and we'll watch the skies, and I want to get everybody to see what I'm seeing. So the more people see what you're seeing, the less crazy in your head you are. True. Now, some, something that's, or that you'll think you are anyway, um, <laughs> something that's very, I was contacted recently by a university in America, a very famous university, and they wanted to know uh, about my brain. Um, they're doing a, a test, a study, 
into human brains of so-called experiences, contactees, uh, whatever the case is, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, but apparently they found that a certain part of the brain in people like me who see regular anomalous occurrences or semi-regular, whatever you want to call it, um, people like me have a certain part of our brain that are lit up, that are not lit up in the general population of people. So something like maybe 2% or 1% of the Earth's population, much less than that even, right. have this lit up. We don't know yet. Um, so they're doing is studies and they're going to do test MRI scans on our brains and stuff like that. And to qualify for the study, you have to have had at least two or three uh, big UFO sightings with multiple witnesses, physical effects on the body, or uh, camera, video footage with multiple witnesses, multiple times during your life. And that's just to get accepted into the study. So they called us up the other day. So it's very interesting. I'm finding it very, that part of it, I've always, I want to look for a different answer, not just aliens, every every route is it the human mind that's doing that? is the human mind manifesting certain anomalous phenomena that's what this university big university is looking into and this is something i've asked years ago is it possible that we ourselves are creating this somehow but if that's the case how are we able to manifest a ball of light into a sky that can be seen by other people so that's not something in your brain it's been seen by other people. Now, this part of it I find quite fascinating, and you know that's why I'm doing this, and I want to get to the bottom of it. Do you think with your conscious, maybe you contact with them and they just show up? It's quite a possibility. It's, it's quite a good possibility. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I've thought about them before, and they've never shown up. Never. You know, I've, I've thought, and I've, I've sat in the room thinking and thinking and thinking, and they looked out the window for an hour, nothing. Or gone outside, nothing. Other times, I'll be just I'll be just sitting there and looking at the television. Then all of a sudden, I'll just go. I'll get up, walk to the door, look up, and there is it's sitting there. And you sometimes feel, you get you feel that you have to leave the house. Oh yeah, you, you don't even feel like you have to leave. You just get up and walk to the door and, and go outside. You don't even think. Sometimes it's very bizarre. I've gone out the back and stood there, standing there for 20 minutes. Not even realised. I was just sitting there, look up at the sky. My dad's come out the back, looked up, and right above us in the backyard are three orange balls in a triangle, twisting around like this. And then they stopped, and then started moving across this way all at once, all three of them. You know? And I don't know if they were three separate objects or if they're connected to the one triangular-shaped object. I'm not 100% sure. I never probably probably will be, um, but. You know, um, which but area, photo, which, photo, which area of mm -hmm. Australia is more um, have more activities of UFOs? Which area from Australia? You said you're going to Dunedo, and you right right there now. Dunny do, yeah. Dunny do, Dunny do, Dunny do. It sounds very funny. It's a funny name, but um, it, it's a country. Huh? There's under a thousand people in the whole town, so there's not many people there. So everybody knows everybody. Everybody goes to bed very early at night, and um, as soon as the lights go out, you know, and then the town lights go out as well. So the street lights, there's only a couple of street lights on in the main part of town. So everywhere's dark, everywhere, all through town. So, and while everyone's making their dinner or everything, I'll go out there, and sometimes they'd show up early, seven o'clock, six thirty. Sometimes nine o'clock, sometimes two in the morning, sometimes eleven at night. A lot of times they'd shop at eleven thirty-ish, which is very strange. Um, yeah, so everything you write it down, you write down notes, points, like a detective, trying to find places, trying to find um, objects that are the same. That you photograph years apart, you know. So you can say, okay, this is a definite object because I photographed it seven times over my life. So it's come back seven times. So it's a definite object. I can class that object myself. I can draw it, write it down, put you know, all the stuff on hard drives, everything, whatever the case is, and then say, okay, now there's certain anomalous phenomena associated with UFOs that I have been writing down for a while now and working on for about three years. And I've been working on a lot of composite photography, taking um, star trail photos and whatnot, and capturing some very anomalous phenomena going against the stars, different directions, all that sort of stuff, and 
I can't, I can't explain most of this at the moment. I really can't because it's so much activity and so much stuff going on, not in every photo or not in every thing that you film or whatever, but all up when you look at it and you think, okay, I know a 91-year-old lady who's never seen one UFO in her whole life, but she wants to. She's 91, you know, nearly 100. She wants to see a UFO, and I want her to see one, you know. That, uh, that's my goal right now, <laughs> my, in the next few days. So, <laughs> but you can't, it's not up to you. I wish it were up to me, yeah. you know. Um, but just, <laughs> it's something that, you know, when, when people experience the phenomena, they can feel very special, very egotistical about themselves. And I say, look, it's not about you. It's, you're not special. Yeah. You know, I know you like to think you are, but it's more to get other people to think they're special, you know, so that they match up their own belief or whatever, or they, they fool people. Unfortunately, the whole world is full of UFO charlatans. Yeah, and who are, a, they are, they are. And, and, and a lot of these people I've met behind the scenes, I've met personally, or had them stay at my house or whatever, and found out that they're not the people who they claim to be on the TV, yeah. you know, in front of all you. And to me, that disgusts me. And I've spoken up about it multiple times now. I'm not afraid of these people. people I don't care what they say. Think people, of... people is different. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do, so. you know, do you think that maybe Donado is something special place for this activity? I'd like to think it is because of the quietness of the town. Um, but at the same time, over the last eight years, my father who's lived there continuously, I've been gone, but my father who stayed there and lived there, he's uh, seen one thing in eight years. Whereas we used to see things every second night when I was there. So now I'm coming back on Tuesday, coming, and then hopefully with better equipment, better cameras, better night vision binoculars, the record much clearer and crisper. Um, you know, we'll have better footage. I'm not worried, I don't care if I don't. It doesn't matter, I've got enough footage. I know, I know myself, they're real, you know, and I don't need to prove to anyone that they're real anymore. People need to prove that to themselves if they want it. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Not that I know of. I've, been, I've looked into it, uh, but not that I can tell. But what I have found that right through Dunedoo is a massive trail of quartz crystal. So there's a huge vein that goes right through town. It goes through town and onto my uncle's property. So 20 kilometers plus, very big vein of wow. mass, massive. So, and what we'd see, not every time, but a lot of times, when we'd see the UFOs appear, the orange balls of light, or the red balls of light, or white balls of light, or other objects appear, or shafts of light, or whatever the case, when you'd see them appear, they would fight, move across the crystal quartz vein. So they'd go in the direction where the crystal quartz was going through town. They'd follow it, backwards and forwards. Very strange, and then they stop sometimes, and very unusual. So when you, you think, what's going on there? What's happening? What are they doing? Is that have something to do with the quartz vein, the crystal quartz? Because quartz is um, it conducts electricity. Can get you, you know when you cut quartz down and whatnot. So I know that other places of the world, um, colleagues as well, like in in areas that are high with iron, you know, um, areas that are high with. Uh, uh, site crystals, all sorts of other things, anything like that, um, they seem to be repeat attractants for aerial phenomena, some type of aerial phenomena that seems to show up and move along. Are they getting energy from these crystals? Are they powering their ships? Are they, what are they doing? You know, there's a theory that, because a lot of people know that they dive into the oceans and they dive into mountains and disappear with no sound whatsoever and just like melt into the mountain and they're gone. And I've seen this with my own eyes and other people have too with me. Really? And also other objects appear in the sky out of nowhere, just whoop, take up a big ship and then move across, you know, but they appear out of nowhere. Whoop, and you see porthole windows, windows across yeah. the thing, you know? And so what? That's incredible. Like how, how can this happen, you know? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, it's just amazing, you know? So. It's one of those things that you just got to say, okay, 
how do I prove this is not fake? You can't prove it's not fake. You can't prove it's not real. So you just got to put it out there. People will make their minds up in the end of the day. So that's all you can hope for. Okay, do you know if in this area, wherever you are right now, have some kind of uh, electromagnetic anomaly in the ground? The area I'm in at the moment, quite possibly no. I'm in the city at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows what we've got under us, really. Um, if, that, if it has to do with that under us, or if it has to do with us, why they're here, I think it's a mixture. I think they're here for their own reasons. There's a theory as well, they go into the oceans because they use our water as a fuel source. Um, there's a case here in Australia a few years ago, a very famous case up at Gosford, where a massive UFO came down, a very big ship, like out of the movies, you know, came down, hovered above the water, and started sucking water up into it, from the from the Ocean. the river, straight up into the the UFO, and then as they're sucking it up, it's going up in streams like this, swirling up to the the UFO, and then it was witnessed by hundreds of people over the course of the night. It was witnessed by hundreds of people. What city so, was that? So you know, Gosford. Gosford. Called Gosford. G O S F O R D. Gosford. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Look that up, and Gosford UFO um, over water. Very interesting stuff. And in other cases around the world, same thing. They've been seen sucking up water. Why? What are they doing? I you know? don't know. <laughs> I don't oh. know. See, your, your, your answer is as good as mine. Yeah. At the end of the day, no one is a real expert on UFOs. Anyone who claims they are, are not. I mean, we learn from all this data. You can using data with the videos, with pictures. There's the people who has experiences meeting uh, first kind, second, third kind, fifth kind uh, contacts with the extraterrestrials or another different kind of energies or entities, intelligence beings, and they uh, they get messages from them and they share the messages with us. So that is the way we can learn. Uh, okay, what do you think about this? Who are they and why are they coming here? Who are they and why are they coming here? Uh -huh. I don't know. I'd love to be able to tell you, but I don't know. Okay. And even if I could tell you, they wouldn't let me tell you. How? Oh, so maybe you know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we, we can finish that video. Uh, can you, uh, now you have a chance, I mean, Bulgarians who are going to watch that video, what are you going to tell to them about your experiences? What am I going to tell people who are watching the video about my experiences? Yes. Um, well, okay, my experiences, they've been fascinating for me and others who've seen them around me. But they wouldn't be too fascinating for other people, unless you know you've got an open mind and you believe, or you already know they exist, or whatever the case is. Most people don't; they exist 100%. So most people go, okay, well, whatever, you know. If I don't see it, I don't know. I just keep moving on with my life, you know. That's a lot of people, and that's fair enough. That's understandable. We only get one short life on this earth, so we got to make the most of it, right? So, um, but, but I, I believe that um, whatever they're doing, they, they def there's a mission going on, 100%. Going back since the early days, and if you follow ufology right from the beginning, from its very inception, uh, these things seem to have been watching us, observing us. Um, and now, whether that denotes that they are some type of creator of us, I'm not sure. Did they make us? Did they? Why are they? Are they abducting us? Are they actually doing that stuff, or is that in people's minds? Are they making people think that? You know, um, look at in Dunny Do. I had two experiences which were very, 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 very strange. I woke up. I had two dreams which were so vivid in my imagination at the time that I, and they were dreams involving aliens. Okay, aliens on ships of all things, and uh, it's so vivid that and so real. You know, that's that's why I can describe real. You know, um, so real, and that I woke up in my bed after the dream. And both times, two months apart, eight weeks apart, with these two marks on my left leg. The wow. same marks, perfect circles. Wow. One was big, one was smaller. 
Now, I've got photos of them as well, and it looked like somebody has sucked out the blood vessels out of a circle in my leg and put them to the surface of the skin, you know, like spider vein kind of thing, in a tight little circle. It was the most bizarre-looking thing I've ever had in my life. It's happened that twice I've dreamt about being on a, a ship, even seeing beings walking around us, and there was nine of us on this ship, and we were stuck on this black stuff, black cold goo or whatever it was, and it was down our back, and at the time I had a bit of long hair at the back, so I had a ponytail, and I could move my head, whereas others I could see couldn't move their head very much. So I could look over it this way a little bit, and I could see these other humans lying down on our backs. Everybody was naked, lying, and with beings walking around the perimeter part of this ship, while we're stuck in the bottom part, which is a conical part of coming out of the bottom of the craft. It seemed like dipped in, like this. And we're stuck along the dips around the perimeter, so we can sort of see each other, but what I saw from everybody else, they had their eyes closed. And there was one, there was eight men, eight of us were men, and one wimp woman. The woman looked like Kim Basinger, the, the actress from Hollywood, in the 80s, 1980s, you know, with the long permed hair? Yeah. Yeah, looked like Kim Basinger, yeah. And it pff, never happened to me ever before or ever after in the last eight years since. Never once, but both times I woke up with marks on my leg. Now that to me, that's out there, you know. I, that's something that still stays with me because I can't explain that, but I don't. I try not to concentrate on that. I try to concentrate on actual evidence and data over guessing. I, I don't like to guess. Could it be this, could it be that, you know, who knows, blah, blah, blah. I've done a lot of guessing in my life. I realize you can't just keep guessing. You know, you, at the end of the day, you need to find out what it actually is, get it out there to the people, whatever the case is. Um, but it's not that easy. There seems to be somebody or something who wants to stop people like me getting out there and getting into the public and waking the human mind up and psyche up. It seems that they want other people to do it. Um, certain individuals or groups like TTSA um, and, and maybe um, anything that's ex-government controlled or who knows. Um, or, or had anyone from the government working in it beforehand. Um, and uh, I've just had my, my website hacked a month ago. And we can't, we can't work out something or somebody has taken all my listings down off Google, detached them from my website, and then blocked us behind a firewall saying that, so if you go on my website, www.aapi.info, you'll see that it's behind a security wall and it says that somebody might be trying to access your system, blah, blah, blah. And nobody in the world can get onto the website. We've had people sending messages. My Facebook has gone. My Facebook pages have gone. Everything's gone. I can't do anything at the moment. I just got my, my normal Facebook back and it took days, days and days and days. So there's something strange going on lately. Just last week, my um, computer, the Everything was hacked all at once, and everything went down. And it happened, I think, two weeks have, before that. You need to have a backup for your files. External. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah external Hard drive. Backup, yeah. yeah. I've got to have about twenty. <laughs> have about twenty. <laughs> I, I go. Through, I go through them. I was, I was talking to you before about high strangeness. Now, anybody involved in the topic or had anything anomalous happened to them in their lives, they may have had something else other than UFOs happen. They may have seen a shadow. They may have had sleep paralysis. They may have had very strange coincidences they couldn't explain. Um, it goes very deep, it goes very deep. Um, objects move. Um, very weird energies in the house or in your head or thoughts or very strange things and feelings. You realize that's not my thought, what the hell, you know? This phenomena seems to be, it's transient phenomena, which is, is not really good for us because it doesn't show up all the time when we expect it to, but at the same time, when it does show up, it, it does so without care or abandonment. So it just doesn't care if we see it or not, most of the time. But other times, they seem very quiet and protective. So sometimes they care if we see, and sometimes they don't. So it's hard to really lay them down into one basket and say, okay, they're all like this. Because maybe, maybe um, 
they're, they're a they're, there's a theory that like the greys and other alien supposed alien races out there yeah. are, are, are collect like a robotic collective who all work together slave together for the common good or the common cause or purpose or whatever the case may be now um, you, you couple that with you know these good and bad lights in the sky what are they doing why are they chasing each other around and chasing each other away you know and and stuff like that out of our atmosphere you know very bizarre so to me that's reassuring to me that shows that something something is looking after us <laughs> hey thank you very Thanks, much again for your time and um thank you sir and goodbye to everyone thank you so much yeah have a good night bye bye yeah. best of luck with your mission and your job sir thank you best of luck with your mission and your job oh thank you you're doing very best of luck sir thank yeah, you thank you